Hi there, in this video I'm going to go through the properties in relation to a circle. So here's the first property, the angle in a semicircle is a right angle. So by right angle we mean 90 degrees. Here is a circle and if I draw the diameter and if I draw a triangle in this circle which contains the diameter, the angle in a semicircle in this case is always a right angle, so it's always 90 degrees. So moving on to the second property, the perpendicular from the centre to a chord bisects the chord. By chord I mean a straight line whose end points lie on the circumference of a circle. If this is my circle and if this is the chord, now if I draw a line from the centre to this chord, so the perpendicular in particular from the centre will bisect the chord into two equal parts. So that is property number two. Moving on to property number three, the radius of the circle from the centre to a point is perpendicular to the tangent at that same point. So again, if I have a circle like so, and if I have a tangent to this circle, so remember by tangent, it's a line which meets the curve at one point. Now. If I draw a line from the radius to the tangent to the circle at that same point, the angle between that tangent and the radius of that circle is 90 degrees. Now, moving on to some examples. So, in these examples, we may need to use one of these three properties. So, with example number one, example number one reads, find the equation of the circle whose diameter is the line joining the points with coordinates a, 1, 5 and b, minus 2, 3. So let's have a go at this example. Let's think about what property we're going to be using to solve it. So back to the paper and pen. So here's example number one. So let's imagine uh, the situation. So we have a circle like so. So we have two points in the question. So point A has coordinates 1 and 5 and we have another point B. B has coordinates in this case minus 2, 3 and these two points A and B form the diameter of this circle. So let me draw the diameter. So AB is the diameter passing through the centre of course of the circle. So the question is, we need to work out the equation of the circle. Now remember, in one of the properties, so in property number one, the angle in a semicircle is a right angle. So I'm going to be using this property. So if we go back to the paper and pen, so if I let P be a point of, uh, on my circle with coordinates X and Y, and if I use this point P, having coordinates X and Y on my circle, and use it to form a triangle containing this diameter. So remember, with that property that we discussed, this angle over here is 90 degrees. Let me show you how to apply this property in order to work out the equation of this circle containing AB. Now remember, in one of the coordinate geometry videos, if two lines are perpendicular, the product of their gradients equate to minus 1. So we're going to work out the gradient of ABP, we're going to work out the gradient of BP, we're going to multiply these gradients giving us minus 1 and we're going to use this in order to work out the equation of this circle. So firstly AP. So I'm going to take A having coordinates 1, 5 to be my x1, y1. I'm going to take P so P has coordinates X and Y to be my X2, Y2. Let me work out firstly MAP. So remember, if you have two points, the formula for the gradient is Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. So if I substitute the data in, Y2 in this case is Y minus y1 which is 5 divided by x2 which is x minus x1 which is 1. So this is the gradient of AP. 
So let me also work out the gradient of BP. So B has coordinates minus two and three. I'll take that as my X1, Y1 in the formula. P has coordinates X and Y. I'll take that as X2, Y2 for the formula. So M, B, P. So let's use the same formula. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So let's substitute the given data. So M, B, P will be Y2. So Y2 corresponds to Y minus Y1 corresponds to 3 okay divided by so divided by x2 x2 corresponds to x minus x1 which is minus 2 so it's minus of a minus 2 so if I expand the brackets from here I'll get y minus 3 over and I have in the denominator x minus into minus 2 plus 2 so this is the gradient of uh, BP. As we discussed, so we have the gradient of AP. So here's the gradient of AP. Gradient of AP we calculated in terms of X and Y. We also have the gradient of BP. So we have the gradient of this line over here. And since according to the property, these two lines are perpendicular, Let's multiply these gradients and equate to minus one. And from there on, we'll work out the equation of our circle. So let me continue here. So since uh, MAP times MBP is equal to minus one as they're perpendicular. So MAP is Y minus five over X minus one. So let me take a ruler and multiply by rather. So multiply by MBP and that is Y minus three over X plus two. So let's include that. So Y minus three over X plus two. And since that is equal to minus one, so let me encase these terms in brackets. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply. So if I cross multiply, I'll have y minus 5, y minus 3. That is equal to minus into x minus 1, x plus 2. And if you expand the brackets, you're going to get the equation of the circle. So once you expand, you should get x squared plus y squared plus x minus 8y plus 13 is equal to 0. So this should be the answer to example number 1. So let's go back to the screenshot. Let's have a look at example number 2. Example number 2 is to find the equation of the tangent at that point 3, 1 on the circle x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 10y minus 8 is equal to 0. So let's see how we can solve this problem. So back to the paper and pen. Let's have an understanding um, in order to help us solve example number 2. So we need to use one of the properties in order to help us solve this example. So the idea of this problem is we have a circle like so and we have a point 3 1 on this circle so we have a tangent at this point so here's a tangent at the point 3 1 on the circle so if we go back to one of the properties that we discussed so namely property number three the radius of the circle from the center to a point is perpendicular to the tangent at the same point. So we're going to use the Vevey property in order to help us solve this problem. So back to the paper and pen. Now we also have the equation of the circle. So the equation being x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 10y 
minus 8 is equal to 0. So the idea here is first we're going to work out the coordinates of the center. So I'm going to call that center point C. And we can calculate the coordinates of the center point um, using one of the theories that we've learned in the last video. So remember in the last video, and I'll provide a link to that video in the description below. So in the last video, you can compare the equation given with x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to zero. So you can make the comparison of the equation given with this equation in order to work out g, f and c. And with these values, you can work out a, the center of the circle and b, you could also work out if you want the radius of the circle also. However, we only need uh, the center coordinates of the circle. So remember to work out the coordinates of the center. So the center coordinates will be of the form minus g minus f. So first of all, let's make a comparison to work out g and f. So the coefficient of x over in, in this equation here is 2g. The coefficient of x in the equation in question is minus 4. So let's make a note that 2g is equal to minus 4. So if I rearrange, g will be minus 2. And if I take a green pen, the coefficient of y in the journal equation is 2f. The coefficient of y in the equation given is plus 10. So 2f is equal to plus 10 which means that f is 5. So I have the values of g and f. So let's continue. So for the circle, or for the center rather, c, the center will have coordinates minus g. So g is minus 2. So it's going to be a minus of a minus 2 in this case. Minus of a minus 2 is plus 2. And... Uh, the value of f is 5, so it's going to be minus of f, so it's going to be minus of 5 in this case. So this is the coordinate of the centre, so the coordinates being 2 and minus 5. So you can mark that on our diagram. So on the diagram, coordinates of the centre, 2 minus 5. So let's go back to the screenshot. So remember property number three, the radius of the circle from the center to the point where the tangent is drawn is perpendicular to the tangent itself. So if we go back to the paper and pen, so if we draw this radius, so this radius should be perpendicular to the tangent. So in order to work out the equation of the tangent, what we can do is we can work out the gradient from the center to uh, the point where the tangent is drawn. So we can work out the gradient using the coordinates 2 minus 5 and 3, 1. And using that gradient, we can work out the gradient of the tangent because the tangent gradient times the gradient of the line joining the center to the point where the tangent is drawn should be equal to minus one as they're perpendicular. So let's work out the gradient of this line over here. So I'm gonna take my x1, y1 to be the center, two minus five. I'm gonna take x2, y2 to be the point where the tangent is drawn. That is three, one. Let's work out the gradient. So I'm going to call this gradient M1. So using the formula Y2 minus Y1 over uh, X2 minus X1. So if I substitute in the data, so Y2 is 1 minus Y1 is minus 5 divided by, so divided by, x2, x2 is 3, minus x1, x1 is 2. So if I continue through, 
1 minus minus 5 is 6, so 6 in the numerator, divided by 3 minus 2 is 1, I make the gradient 6. So remember, this gradient of 6 is the gradient of the line containing the centre and the point where the tangent is drawn. So that's the gradient of this line over here. So using that gradient, we can work out the gradient of the tangent as the tangent and this line are perpendicular according to the property. So let's work out the gradient of the tangent using m1 times m2 is equal to minus 1. So m2 being the gradient of our tangent. Now m1, we had a value of 6. So if I replace that over here, I'll get 6 times m2, that is minus 1. m2 then is minus 1 over 6. So minus 1 over 6, m2. m2 is the gradient of our tangent. So the question is, so back to the screenshot, find the equation of the tangent at the point 3, 1. So back to the paper and pen. So we have everything that we need. We have the gradient of the tangent, minus 1 over 6, and we have that coordinate, 3, 1. So to work out the equation of the tangent, so remember the formula for the equation of the line, y minus y1, that is m into x minus x1. So we have x1 and y1, the coordinate that the line or the tangent passes through is 3 and 1 from the question and we have m, m is the gradient of the tangent which is minus 1 over 6. So if I substitute the data into this formula we're going to have y minus y1 is 1 that is equal to m which is minus 1 over 6 into x minus and x1 being 3 so if we expand the brackets from here, we'll have y minus 1 on the left. Minus 1 over 6 times x is minus 1 over 6x. Minus 1 over 6 times minus 3 is plus half. And if I take the minus 1 to the opposite side, y will then be minus 1 over 6x plus and half plus this one is 3 over 2. So this should be the equation of the tangent at the point 3, 1. Okay? So that completes example 2 and that also sadly ends this video. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, a like is very much appreciated. Do plenty of practice related problems and I hope to see you again. Thank you.